Right, so apparently this isn't turning on. And they are correct. It is not turning on. Okie doke, let's have a look then. So, first thing I'm going to test is the power supply, but this has been open before, so the chances are it's not going to be anything to do with the power supply. Chances are someone's already checked that. But I will check it. Just to double check. Okay, so we've got 12 volts on that side. Well, 11.7 volts. And 11.7 on that one. So we've got power going into the console. Right, so now let's just figure out whether it's going to be the safe bridge board or the main board. Let's have a look. So, if we go into continuity mode, we can check and see if we've got a short to ground on 12 volt there, and we do not. What is my resistance? Oh, that's diode mode, damn it. No, give me resistance mode. 12 million ohms, that is absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with that board. What about this one? Four, five thousand ohms. 400,000 ohms has just jumped up. We've got no issues with the primary 12 volt rail. So, what I want to do next is just isolate and figure out is it a main board issue or is it a safe bridge board issue? That's what I want to find out next. So, I've got a known good working safe bridge board which I can use. This is off one of my own consoles. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. Whether you've got a simple project that requires a quick mod board or you want to launch your own products to the world, PCBWay can help. With fantastic pricing on multi layer PCBs, flex PCBs, 3D printing, and even laser cutting solutions, you're sure to get everything you need all in one place. Custom PCBs start from just $5 for a one to two layer board with a fast 24 hour build time and free shipping on orders over $30. PCBWay are also proud to announce their new aluminium PCBs, which start at just $120 per square meter. Check out what PCB way have to offer by clicking on the link in the video description or the top pinned comment and get your project started today. Thanks again to PCB way for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to the repair. So I've got a Nexus ribbon as well. So this is one of my power buttons. Let's just check and see if it turns on with this Southbridge board. It will be beep on beep off if it's this Southbridge board. Uh, sorry, if the safe bridge board is faulty, it'll go to beep on beep off. It won't actually work because there's a little chip on the board which is married to the APU board. So in order to replace the safe bridge board, we'd have to swap it. Yeah, we've got power. It's a safe bridge board. Huh. Okay. I think they might have done something in terms of software to stop the Southbridge board being paired. That is interesting and new. Um, I have never been able to get a board to turn on or a console to turn on with a replacement Southbridge board without replacing the actual chip turning on. Um, Okay, right, let me just, just for clarification, because it could be an excess board issue as well, um, as in like this board, because this is mine, right? So these top parts are mine. The power supply is the customer's, but these top parts are mine. So this is a customer safe bridge board. So I'm just going to make sure that it is actually the safe bridge board that's faulty, and make sure that it hasn't just magically come back to life. But it was booked in for no power. Yeah, okay, so we've got no power with that customer board. So we know that the issue is safe bridge board related. So yes, I have an option. I can just make it easier myself, put that there, uh, put that board in. But where's the fun in that, right? We're here to fix things, not part swap. It's going to cost a lot more 
for me to replace the customer Southbridge board with one of mine than it is for me to fix this board. Because if I, well, I've got to charge labour, right? And then a fully working Southbridge board, you're looking at like 100 quid minimum for a fully working Southbridge board. So, yeah, I've got to at least try and fix a customer's Southbridge board first. And then if that doesn't, if that doesn't work, if that's unsuccessful, then I can think about swapping it. Right, okay, okay. So, good news is, this is a version 1 board, which means it's got the silk screen on it. So, it's got the markings for all of the voltage rails. So, that's a good thing. Makes it a little bit easier to actually fault find the damn thing. Yeah, so the good thing about these is the fact that the, uh, the silk screen is on the V1 board, which makes it a lot easier to actually fault find it. But could be anything it's more likely going to be an issue with either the 5 or the 3.3 volt rail that transistor there doesn't look great that u6 transistor so what i want to do then is just visually inspect the board and just see if there's anything i can find so look for any signs of for example um blown components or anything like that so what i mean by the silk screen is you see, like you see this tp4 here where it says 5 volt or 5v that's a 5 volt test point the good thing about these boards is like i said it prints it onto the board so you don't have to pretty much guess i suppose at where the test points are i do need to make some sort of a diagram for this and see if, and uh you know for the v2 boards especially One point eight volt area and one point one volt area. Um, so it could be it could be an issue with uh, the the one point eight volt rail. It, it has been in the past. Uh, if you do get marry issues on these, like if you don't allow you to swap the board, it, this chip here is V eight zero B. That's the BIOS U twenty five. Just swap that and uh, it'll be marry it. I'm just hunting at the minute. A visual inspection can give you a lot of information sometimes not always but sometimes it's gonna be hard for me to keep it in focus oh, I'm not really seeing anything in terms of damage components so I think it's time to run through test points and just see Let's see what's there. We'll see what. Uh, see what's short, or see if anything's short. So I very much doubt it's the Nexus area on this. But let's just test a few areas in diode mode. So I've got. Oi, go to diode mode. No bed. Turn the beeper off. Let's go for. Red probe on ground, like that. Right, so we've got the 3.3 .3 volt rail there, or one of them. Um, that is open line, but I believe that is normal until it powers on. We've got a 12 volt rail just there, which we can check, and we get 0 0.47 in voltage mode, that's normal. Uh, 12 volt gated. 2.69, that's normal for that rail. 5 volt is short. Okay, yeah, so if I go into continuity mode and turn my beeper on, we have a dead short, 0.2 ohms on the 5 volt rail. So that means that we found the short, but can we fix it? That is the question. So what I'll do then is... Rather than sitting there messing around trying to figure out what the hell's going on, I'll just solder a wire to the 5 volt, five volt rail and inject voltage. Right, nice big, nice big solder blob there. Okay, so I'm gonna set my 
bench supply at one volt. One volt! Ha ha ha! And inject. We're getting a whopping five amps of current. Whew, that's a lot of current. Well, I mean, it's really not. It's five watts, but still a fair amount of current. Uh, right, let's load up my thermal camera. Right, we see a nice little hot spot there. So around here somewhere. But I want to try and isolate that a bit more. So let me just grab my macro lens. Right, so we should be able to isolate the actual component if we get in real close. And it looks like that capacitor right there is bad. We don't even need the microscope for this. I have disconnected power. Might help if I was, I was uh, at any kind of reasonable temperature. There we go. Don't worry about that capacitor I just knocked while removing that. That'll push back into place once I've resold a new one. So this is why I'd rather fix the issue rather than just swapping the board because Look, what would I realistically have to charge for that? If the board costs £140, uh, sorry, £100 minimum to actually buy a replacement board, realistically, for me to make it worth my while, I've got to be charging like 150 quid, right, to fix the console. Whereas, in reality, I can fix it for more like, you know, 60 quid, 70 quid. Right, I could probably get away with not putting another cap on there, but I may as well put one on. Okie dokie. Let's just confirm, make sure we don't have a short. So, continuity mode, and uh, nope. We now get, well, shut up multimeter, 0 0.36 volts in diode mode. Cool, good stuff, 0 0.36 volts. This should now work. Right, let's give it a test, shall we? Let's see what the deal is now. It should now turn on. There we go. She turns on. Display. Boom. Winner, winner. Yeah, so that's how three board is fixed. That's good. go right now let's make sure it turns on and works boom well it turns on but does it work right there we go winner winner that console is fixed by console fix uh, I'll give this a full test in the morning I'm not gonna sit there and test it right now um, I don't generally test them on videos and streams. FIFA check. Um, Football Manager 2024. Same fucking thing. Another job done. Short on the 5 volt. One cap. There you go.